So I, I, I heard you mention uh, Neil deGrasse Tyson, and you was kind of saying, like, you might be leaning towards him a little bit, but, you know, Terrence Howard's making a lot of noise right now. So I wanted to see what, are you leaning more towards Neil deGrasse or, or uh, Terrence Howard right now? <laughs> I'm not leaning towards anybody. To be honest, I see, I put my, I put myself in both of their position, right? And they're gonna appeal to different ideals. So in Neil's case, I don't think he's willing to risk everything that he's gained at this point because he's really, for lack of better terms, a token inside of a very, very um, structured field, right? When we talk about NASA and we talk about all that, so you know, I have my own views and ideas, but again, it's not about just, you know, going into beef like, yo, you know, this guy's working for the establishment. He's working for an institution. Like you have to see this person as a man that has gone through his life and has responsibilities, including his kids, his life, his legacy. And if he was ever to transfer over to something else, it would have to be pretty solid. Other than that, he's just going to continue to toe the line that he's towing, right? And in that way, he's an opposite to somebody like Terrence Howard, okay? And this is what makes it a perfect, you know, I don't even think they was really in a rival. It was just, it, I mean, that wasn't even the point of conversation today. It was like to show, actually, we need to see Terrence Howard and, and Neil deGrasse Tyson. If you could ever see that, like them coming together, it would be like a sign that the Matrix is finally getting it. <laughs> You see what I mean? Because they would kind of link up as brothers and be like, look, let's just go at this. But again, there would be a lot of, I think there would be a lot more digressing on DeGrasse Tyson's side about what needs to be believed uh, than it would be on Terrence. Now, in relation to Terrence, okay, so I have this thing about that. As I explained before, like I used to be in Atlanta and I used to go to the comedy club and there were there were these people in the room and all of those people end up becoming famous. Okay. And I've noticed that throughout my life that certain people that were impactful later on that I saw them in early life, or I spent a moment with them. And in Terrence's case, I happened to be in Vegas and I was coming up from the bottom floor of the Bellagio up to the main area and as I'm coming up, Terrence jumps in the elevator with two Asian girls. So he may not ever remember me, but he would definitely remember that night he was with the Asian girls. And I was like, yo, what's up, Terrence? And he was like, yo, what's good? And he was just as cool and laid back as the Terrence that you see right now. I got off on the second floor going up and he went all the way up, right? But now look at us, here we are, you know, 20 years later, and now Terrence is clearly going through the, the entire process of enlightenment, right? And in that way, he's like the underdog. So he's always gonna be able to, go. I mean, that's Terrence's path when you look at it. If you study ideology, like even from hustle and flow to, you know, virtually B-rated movies all the way. So you can see like an archetype and a path with many people that end up becoming the leaders. And But he's older. So remember that he's like one generation even ahead of me in that way. So I feel like that, as I explain to everybody else, even the, the vibe going across the networks, regardless of everybody's different agenda, because people don't talk to you unless they have some kind of agenda. So Joe has some kind of agenda, you know, whether even if it's just views or, you know, there's there's stuff that's layered. People don't do things for anything. Even Terrence, he has his own agenda. He has his own thing that he wants to do. And, and we would expect him to. Right. So I just think that when we come to the basis of all this, though, we have to be able to ask ourselves. So are we being entertained or are we actually going to build something? And that's where I, I feel like that the community has to start going at next. Okay, like, what are we going to build now? Are we going to build the Terrence Howard Institute of Learning? Um, you know, are we going to, Is you know, what is Neil going to do, right? Like, he's going to sit back on Star Talk. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's, so that's what I'm saying. I'm, I'm still looking for that next 
level of activation that we all need to reach where it's no more just conversation. It's like we really come in and show this intelligence. We show this spirituality, as we're calling this spiritual power. You see what I mean? And, and, and if we, because remember, Terrence said he doesn't really have any money right now, but he knows a lot of people and a lot of people were ready to rally behind him. So the biggest thing for a person like that is to determine, but where are we going? <laughs> you notice that's the thing. Like we could get so excited about everybody knowing about this, but I've always said that it's almost akin to waking somebody up and they were asleep. And it's like, people don't like to really be woken up. You better be waking them up to like breakfast in bed or something like that. And that's not what's happening right now. We're waking people up to basically almost a nightmare. So it becomes, well, shoot, we need to get some front lines of assistance happening and we need to really build something. So when you see then it becomes like a beef. Now it's like Terrence Howard versus, and then, you know, people have garnished a lot of views by just saying Terrence Howard was wrong. He's an idiot, right? And this is like 50 million views right now to do something like that. And I would, I would say for sure, if, if we didn't recognize within Terrence ourselves, even when we go through that awakening, then we would be blind. Neil, definitely less so. He definitely seems like somebody who has literally been put in the position that he's in because of certain benefits to having a person like him there. And then I also feel like, Billy Carson be trying to come for that position if he could. <laughs> you see what I mean? And that's that's just the whole take on things. That's as, that's as much as I'll say. <laughs> it's like centralized versus decentralized, right? Basically. <laughs> <laughs> All right, fam. Let's keep it rolling. We got the fam justice in the house. Holding this fam. Keep going. You can Hold unmute. This Holding this fam. What's up? Hey. Hey, it's good to speak to great minds here today. Um, I just, I've, I've, been, I've been thinking about this. Okay, I just want to put some disclaimers out there. Um, I haven't watched the full video just for the simple fact that I see, I, I believe I seen certain cues that were like, um, I feel like this is going to be psychological like manipulation on behalf of the community. So I'm like, I'm not going to, I'm not going to really watch it. Just the reason why I say that is because number one, the marking of the red, uh, when he was, uh, you know, oh, I'm going to um, basically judge my peers. Um, the way, you know, the way he's basically saying there in the video, I didn't watch the full video. I'm going to tell you why. So when he first came into it, um, I, I just heard Seven, he said that um, when he first started, he said since he couldn't replicate it, basically he's saying it wasn't uh, viable to even go towards. And I was like, hmm, this like kind of, for me, it was like, saying well since you can't backflip or, or since you can backflip and i can't excuse me i'm sorry since you can backflip and we all can't uh we're not basically going to do that and that's what it felt like towards me and i was like you know what i'm just going to go based on um the facts that i know already and i just want to go ahead and talk to dan uh, not talk to but um learn from dan winter and he actually just talked on this about five days ago, I believe, uh, about how, uh, you know, uh, basically what, what he was talking about. And he actually corrected him uh, scientifically. And it was like, it was very interesting to see. So I like definitely encourage everybody to go see uh, Dan Winter's take on um, what you will call, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm a little caught up right now. <laughs> on the geometry, <laughs> what I'm on say. the geometry, because see, that's, that's what it is, is that that field, you don't pretend to, you can't pretend to know what you're talking about in that field, because there are people who really spent their whole lives doing that. And then also, right. there is a surface level to that field, which is based on the geometry. And then there's another level beyond, beyond that, that is based on entities. And if you, and I think that with Dan, you know, even though people struggle with understanding him, so we could always use another person to explain what Dan is explaining, right? Uh, in, in, in many ways, right? So in, in this, I would say catch him in, in, in six months even, right? Like, because I think that that's also where we got to see all of this is that everybody is still coming into this, these stages of awareness. And what we should be seeing here soon, and I'm hoping I can encourage that, is some serious collaborations between the things that the community actually needs to sustain itself beyond entertainment. 
And I like that you said that too, because I was actually, because I'm, I could wrap my, I mean, anybody could wrap their mind around anything, but I could really wrap my mind around things, especially um, these complicated subjects when I just really keep coming at it. Um, I found it really hard to penetrate that field because I learned things rather quickly, but learning from him was not easy because he used, he, he speaks as if um, you should know the terms instead of um, basically breaking down the terms, which you do very much. And that's why I appreciate you because, you know, you understand that people are coming from a, a that people need to uh, find a penetrating point when it comes to these type of fields. And I see that this is a billion dollar industry. If we can find a way to penetrate this field and bring it towards, a, a, you know, a biology, you know, and it, it'll really definitely help. But what is, um, who, who can you recommend for people like me who is just now getting into this field that can, um, find a point to penetrate it and basically find out more about how the unified field theory uh, works. You're already doing it. Um, technically, like I said, I'm listening to everybody. And, you know, that's why I want to make it clear because I think that, again, somebody would jump on one person's side or somebody would jump on one side because that's how it's designed. You with Terrence or you with Neil. And what I'm saying is I'm with Terrence and Neil. I'm with the idea that we all end up pulling out of this <laughs> death spin basically as a people as a country as a world and stop getting played and actually pull resources together because that's that's the thing it's like if we don't have like institutes in new york places to teach and train on this places where there's a cafeteria where you can you see what i mean those are, that's what it, that's what seminaries are like at the end of the day there's so many academics uh a academic institutions you know, we have to get with it. It's like this is just going back and forth and arguing. That was that's like the witty banter, <laughs> right? It's still when they're done at the end of the day, they're making medicines, right? Like, you know, they're they're inventing again machines. They're looking into other elements and in, in creating stuff, right? So look at these societies, the this is the Academia of, of Lincia, the Academia and the Sciences of France, Sweden, Edinburgh. Torino. So all these societies, look, 1825, 1757, so 1666. So this has been two or 300 years of real study. So even if we were like, yo, you know, they, they don't know anything. Well, they do now, because I think that that's another catch to when you pick one side, you start assuming that the institution of science is stupid, <laughs> right? And they don't know anything. They may have a occult knowledge that they are only practicing, uh, so then if you jump on one side, then maybe you miss out on realizing that some of these pieces of equipment are very useful for even your your next level of your own inventions, your next level of even measuring, again, your water, your food, and these kind of things in a way that you will understand, right? So there could be, well, let's just send energy into it, and that's good enough. Absolutely it is. But then there's going to be some people that want to even teach that. Like, here's how you can test the energy that's on your food, right? And some say, well, you could tell that by just looking at it. And it's just, you know, when you're constantly not ready to go from kindergarten all the way to eighth grade, then you're not ready to build the bridge because that's what it really is. 